Tour the Cruise Ports, Mexican Riviera, Part 1, Introduction. Baja, Tijuana, Ensenada, and Cabo San Lucas. Mexican Riviera, Table of Contents. Part 1, Introduction. Baja California, Tijuana, Ensenada, and Cabo San Lucas. All about the Mexican Riviera, Part 1 including Baja California, Tijuana, Ensenada, and Cabo San Lucas. With visiting and touring information, geography, history attractions, and other points of interest. Dr. Sidney Socloff. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2023. Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltov. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tiny.one/ytnavigator. The Mexican Riviera. This is the flag of Mexico. 5/5 5 music. Cuanto le gusta MP3331. Mexico gained its independence from Spain on the 16th of September 1810. Where's Mexico? Mexico is in the southern part of North America and roughly is roughly a triangle located between the U.S. on the north and the Central American countries of Belize and Guatemala on the south. On the west is the Pacific Ocean and to the east is the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Mexico has two large peninsulas. Baja California is in the northwest, and the Yucatan Peninsula is in the southeast. The principal mountain range of Mexico is the Sierra Madre Mountains in central and western Mexico. The Sierra Madre in Mexico is a continuation of the mountain range, or Cordillera, that runs from northern Alaska down through Canada and the U.S. as the Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevada Ranges. This is continued through Mexico as the Sierra Madre and continues through Central America, into South America as the Andes all of the way down to the southern tip of South America. The Sierra Madre Mountains are divided into the Sierra Madre Occidental on the west, Sierra Madre Oriental on the east, and Sierra Madre del Sur on the south. In the middle, between the Sierra Madre Occidental and the Sierra Madre Oriental on the east, is the large central plateau. It is in the southern part of the Mexican plateau where Mexico City is located, as well as most of the population. Along the west coast are the Pacific coastal lowlands and on the east bordering the Gulf of Mexico is the Gulf Coastal Plain. In the south end the region of Chiapas is the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. This is a picture of Mexico seen from space. Note the central plateau region and the coastal plains. In the north of Mexico are deserts, and in the south are tropical rainforests. The two major deserts in the north of Mexico are the Chihuahua Desert and the Sonora Desert. The Chihuahua Desert extends from the Mexican state of Chihuahua across the border into southern New Mexico and Texas. Yucca, creosote, and mesquite typify the plants in the Chihuahuan Desert. The Sonoran Desert extends from the Mexican state of Sonora across the border into Arizona and Southern California. It also occupies a major part of the Baja California Peninsula. The Sonoran Desert is one of the largest and hottest deserts in North America. At the other end of Mexico, mostly in the state of Chiapas, are the Mexican rainforests the most northerly tropical rainforests in the Americas. They start around the latitude of Mexico City and run southward in the lower elevations. These rainforests hold an amazing number of plants and animals. 
On the border between the U.S. and Mexico is the Rio Bravo, known in the U.S. as the Rio Grande. Mexico and the U.S. shy border that is 3,100 kilometer, 1,900 miles long, much of which is formed by the Rio Grande. Although Rio Grande means big river in Spanish, it is not navigable at all by ocean-going ships in fact. It is barely navigable at all, even by small boats. How big is Mexico? Mexico is more than 1,850 miles, 3,000 kilometers, long from the northwest at Tijuana to the southeast at the border with Guatemala. The area of Mexico is 0.76 million square miles, or 1.97 million square kilometers. This is to be compared to the size of the U.S. of 3.7 million square miles, or 9.6 million square kilometers, and Canada at 3.9 million square miles, or 10 million square kilometers. In comparing Mexico to other countries in North and South America, we see that Mexico is one of the smaller countries in size, about equal to Chile, and much smaller than Brazil or Argentina. What is the population of Mexico? The population of Mexico is 110 million, and it is the 15th largest in the world. In terms of the countries in Latin America Mexico is the second in population after Brazil. It is, nevertheless, the largest Spanish-speaking country, as most of the inhabitants of Brazil speak Portuguese. The United Mexican States is a union of 31 states and a federal district. Each state has its own constitution and congress and its citizens elect a governor, gobernador, as well as representatives, deputados locales, to their respective state congresses. What is the Mexican Riviera? And where is the Mexican Riviera? The Mexican Riviera is this region of the west coast of Mexico from about Cabo San Lucas and Mesatlan south to Acapulco and Huachuco. The mild Mediterranean-like climate of this region together with the warm and clear waters of the Pacific Ocean have made that region one of the world's premier vacation areas and a major destination for cruise ships. This region is called the Mexican Riviera because the climate, the seaside locations, and the resort cities are reminiscent of the French Riviera of the Mediterranean. Principal resort areas of the Mexican Riviera are Cabo San Lucas, Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, Manzanillo, Ixtapa and Zuantinejo, Acapulco, and Huatulco. On the other side of Mexico, on the northeastern part of the Yucatan Peninsula is the resort region popularly known as the Maya Riviera, principally because of its proximity to ruins from the ancient Maya civilization. Principal resort areas of the Maya Riviera are Cancun, Cozumel Island, and Playa de Carmen. Most of this coast was populated with small fishing villages until the 1920s, when the new road system brought tourists. Luxury hotels sprung up in Acapulco, followed by Puerto Vallarta, which gained international fame in the 1960s, when Richard Burton and Ava Gardner filmed Night of the Iguana there, and bought a seaside villa. The Night of the Iguana is a play by Tennessee Williams that had its Broadway premiere in 1961 and was based on a 1948 short story by Williams.
It has been made into movies twice. In 1964 and 2001. The Mexican government aggressively promoted the building of resorts along the Pacific coast during the 1970s. Calling the stretch between Puerto Vallarta down to Manzanillo the Costa de Oro, or Gold Coast. But the entire coast, known as the Mexican Riviera in the U.S. cruise industry, is famous for pristine beaches set against stunning cliffs, coves and verdant jungle landscape. The cruise industry actually owes a debt of gratitude to the Mexican Riviera. The scenic, tourist-friendly ports of Cal provided the backdrop for television's The Love Boat in the 1970s. This TV series brought towns such as Puerto Vallarta and Cabo San Lucas to the attention of Americans everywhere. The Love Boat was an ABC situation comedy that aired for nine years between 1977 and 1986 for 255 episodes. The Love Boat was set aboard a luxury cruise ship that embarked each week on a romantic, sentimental, and often hilarious voyage across tropical seas. Three or four stories were interwoven in each episode and often involved the ship's crew, who were seen on the show every week. Most episodes we filmed on these ships during regular cruises. The Pacific Princess and the Island Princess. Today, the Mexican Riviera is the fourth most popular cruise destination in the world and is rapidly building a reputation as a Caribbean alternative. Particularly as more cruise lines are assigning newer and bigger ships to the region, and also introducing year-round service. Most of the Mexican Riviera cruises start in Los Angeles, although there are some cruises from San Diego, and an occasional departure from San Francisco. The Mexican Riviera lies south of the Tropic of Cancer, so it is in the tropics, and truly a year-round destination. Temperatures remain balmy, in the 70s and 80s, most of the year. August and September can be on the hot side, with temperatures in the 90s, coupled with humidity that can be a little unpleasant. Some cruise lines, such as Royal Caribbean and Carnival, offer year-round voyages, though the majority focus on itineraries from September through May. The climate of the Mexican Riviera Will it be hot? Oh, will it be very hot in the Mexican Riviera? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Acapulco. Here is the average number of days per month with rainfall in Acapulco. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Mezatlan. Here is the average number of days per month with rainfall in Mezatlan. Hey, are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Puerto Vallarta. Here is the average number of days per month with rainfall in Puerto Vallarta. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Mexico City. How does the climate of the Mexican Riviera compare with that of the real Riviera? 
Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Nice on the French Riviera. Here for comparison are the average high temperatures for Nice and Puerto Vallarta. Although both places have relatively mild climates, there is a much larger seasonal change in Nice due to its higher latitude, and the temperatures are considerably cooler in Nice all year long. Hefo comparison are the monthly rainfall totals in inches for Nice and Puerto Vallarta. We see a marked difference in that there is much more rainfall in Puerto Vallarta than Nice. Furthermore, almost all of the rainfall in Puerto Vallarta is in the summer months of June through September, whereas this is the time of least rainfall for the French Riviera. The Money of Mexico Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate, click on this icon. 1 peso equals 0 0.05 US dollars, or about 5 cents US. And 1 US dollar equals 20 pesos. This is a 20 peso note, worth about 1 US dollar. This is a 200 peso note, about 10 US dollars. Wow, $15. That's a lot for a bottle of beer. Note the close similarity in the symbols for Mexican pesos and US dollars. So, that's 15 pesos. Oh, only about 82 cent. You can buy all of these cars at the port of Mesatlan for about 500 million dollars. Actually, that's 500 million in pesos in dollars. It's only about 25 million. Baja California. The Baja California Peninsula is a long narrow peninsula bounded by the Pacific Ocean on the west and the Gulf of California or Sea of Cortez on the east. The Baja California Peninsula is said to be the longest peninsula in the world. Baja California means Lower California and Spanish to distinguish it from Alta California or Upper California, which was once part of Mexico. But after the Mexican-American War in 1848 became part of the U.S. and became the state of California in 1850, the Dominican priests established a chain of missions in Baja California in a fashion similar to the chain of Franciscan missions to the north in Alta California. In 1804 the Spanish colony of California was divided into Alta, Upper, and Baja, Lower, California at the line separating the Franciscan missions in the north from the Dominican missions in the south. After the Mexican War of 1846 to 1848, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1850 gave California proper to the U.S. and assigned Lower California, that is, the Baja Peninsula, to Mexico. The Baja California Peninsula is divided into two states or provinces of Mexico. The northern part is called Baja California and is the northernmost state of Mexico. The Baja California Peninsula is sometimes informally referred to as Baja California Nort or Baja California del Nort. This is to distinguish it from both the anti-Baja California Peninsula, of which it forms the northern half and Baja California Sa, which is the adjacent state that covers the southern half of the peninsula. Principal towns in Baja California Norte are the border cities of Tijuana and Mexicali, and the seaside resort town of Ensenada. The great majority of the population lives close to the U.S. border. Tijuana is the westernmost city in Latin America as well as one of the northernmost cities and stands on the U.S.-Mexico border, adjacent to San Diego County.
California, to the north. Tijuana is the largest city in the Mexican state of Baja California, with a population of 1.5 million. Avenida Revolución has many open bars, pharmacies, and curio shops that attract many tourists. The majority of these businesses accept the U.S. dollar and use English to conduct everyday business transactions. Ensenada Ensenada in the Mexican state of Baja California North is located 70 miles 116 kilometer south of Tijuana. The word Ensenada in Spanish means the inlet or cove. This is the coat of arms of Ciudad de Ensenada, the city of Ensenada. Ensenada has a population of 320,000. Ensenada is strategically located some 75 miles, 120 kilometers, south of the border with the U.S. via a four-lane toll road and a two-lane free road, which makes it a natural destination for tourists on short vacations by car. Ensenada's proximity to California also makes it a destination for short cruise ship trips from the Los Angeles area. Ensenada is locally referred to as La Bella Seneca and Del Pacifico, the Cinderella of the Pacific. The city is home to immigrants from a fair parts of Mexico and from all around the world. Ensenada is in the Mexican state of Baja California Norte and is located 70 miles, 116 kilometers, south of Tijuana, about 85 miles south of San Diego, and 200 miles south of Los Angeles. Ensenada has a population of 460,000. Ensenada, its full name is Ensenada de Todos Santos is the third largest city in the Mexican state of Baja California after Mexicali and Tijuana. Ensenada is located along the Bahia de Todos Santos, an inlet of the Pacific Ocean. Ensenada is backed by small mountain ranges. Due to its location on the Pacific Ocean and Mediterranean latitude, the weather tends to be mild year-round. Although the winter rainy season is short and the area is prone to prolonged droughts. Ensenada is an important commercial and fishing port as well as a cruise ship stop. There is also a navy base, an army base and a military airfield, which functions as an airport of entry into Mexico. Ensenada is the only deep water port in the state of Baja California. Fishing, processing and shipping have made Ensenada Mexico's second busiest port. Ensenada is no longer a sleepy resort town. Each year, some 4.5 million visitors descend on this seaside city that is 68 miles from the border, joining 325,000 residents. It's quite a change from 1542, when Portuguese explorer Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo sailed into the sheltered bay in his quest for the mythical Northwest Passage. Or 60 years later, when Sebastian Vizcaino named the area Ensenada de Todos los Santos after All Saints Day. Over the centuries, many have left their mark here from Spanish missionaries and Russian settlers to gold miners and gamblers. The result is an eclectic mix, from Mexico's oldest winery in Baja's first cantina to a plaza featuring statues of national heroes. In addition to expected attractions like the large tourist shopping area and fish market, Ensenada also offers the unexpected an elegant Prohibition-era casino and a blowhole that spews water 60 feet into the air.
Ensenada is in a wine region that is widely regarded as the best in Mexico. The heart of the wine country is Valle de Guadalupe just to the northeast of Ensenada. It is said that the first grape vines made it to the peninsula, specifically to the San Ignacio Mission, in 1703. When Jesuit Padre Juan de Ugarte planted the first vineyards there. The town of Guadalupe was founded by an immigrant Russian religious sect known as the Molokans in the late 19th century. Most of the Molokan community h migrated to California's Central Valley in the mid 20th century. And a Russian museum commemorating their legacy in the region has been established. This is the Russian Museum commemorating the legacy of the Russian Malakans in the region. About 90% of wine production in Mexico originates in the valleys of Guadalupe and adjacent Calafia. The traditional economic activities in Guadalupe are olive and wine production. Many local wine producers are tours and tastings. A few minutes south of town on Highway 1 is the second largest of three known major marine geysers in the world. This one is known as La Bufadora, the blowhole. La Bufadora is a marine geyser, or blowhole located on the Punta Bunda Peninsula in Baja, California. The spout of marine water occurring every minute or so to varying degrees of height, is created when ocean waves and air are drawn into an underwater cave located in the cliffside, and the trapped air and water then explode upwards. This interaction not only creates the upward shooting spout, but a thunderous noise as well. La Bufadora is the second largest blowhole in the world and can shoot upwards as high as 80 feet above sea level. The gray whale's annual migration from Alaska to the lagoons of Baja California sewer is between December and March and back in April and May. The gray whale's migration is seen from the coast of Ensenada. Sightseeing tours are available every day during the migration season. This is a map of downtown Ensenada. The cruise ship here is within easy walking distance of Avenida López Mateos, the main tourist zone for shopping and dining. Alternatively, taxis and shuttles are available at the dock to take passengers on the short ride downtown. Taxis are also available at corner stands along Avenida López Mateos. Avenida Lopez Mateos and Boulevard Castero are two parallel streets near the waterfront lined with shops. From Mexican liquor and duty-free perfume to woven blankets, leather goods, pottery, and silver jewelry. Among the nicest for Tosqua silver jewelry are Los Castillo and Mario's Silver Shop, Lopez Mateos 815 and 1090. For black pottery of Oaxaca, there's Colores de Mexico, Lopez Mateos 1094, and for Mata Artes pottery, Galleria de Paris Milan, Centro Artesanal, Boulevard, Costero 1094. This is the Riviera del Pacifico. Standing inside this elegant Spanish Moorish building, one can imagine Bing Crosby crooning to Xavier Cugat's orchestra. Initially owned by boxing champion Jack Dempsey, this former casino catered to Americans during Prohibition. Today, it's a cultural center for weddings, receptions, mariachi, and dance performances. The Mercado de Mariscos, Malacan at Avenida El Dorado, is a popular out-of-fish market by the sport fishing pie. Here one can add me the day's catch, including yellowtail, tuna, albaco and marlin. Plaza Civica, 
known locally as Three Hugs Park, is a shady plaza with giant gold-painted busts of three of Mexico's most revered heroes, Miguel Hidalgo, Benito Juarez and Venustiano Carranza. Plaza Civica is very close to the port area and El Malacón. The street in Ensenada called La Primera, meaning the first in English, is a classic tourist spot in Ensenada. That is due to its many curios, and curio days, trinket and souvenir stores, restaurants, hotels, bars and popular clubs such as the Hasong's Cantina and Papas and Beer. There are plenty of things to buy and see as well as many places to go. La Primera is a very busy street, filled with tourists and locals. It is normal to go through a lot of traffic, especially at night time. La Primera is just one block away from Ventana Almar, window upon the sea, a boardwalk seawall avenue where an enormous Mexican flag is located. Will it be hot in Ensenada? Oh, will it be cold? Hey, uh, the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Ensenada. In March, the midday highs will be in the high 60s. And at night time the temperature will drop to a rough at chilly 45. Here is the average monthly rainfall in inches throughout the year in Ensenada. We know the pronounced wet and dry sessions, although the yearly average is less than 9 inches, which classifies it as a desert climate. So, my prediction is that it probably won't rain in Ensenada when we get there. This is a map of Ensenada. This is a map of the central area of Ensenada. Principal towns in Baja California Sur La Paz. In Cabo San Lucas at the southernmost tip of the peninsula. La Paz is the capital of Baja California Sur. And an important regional commercial center. The city has a population of approximately 250,000. The Baja California Peninsula is approximately 760 miles, 1,220 kilometers, long from Tijuana in the north to Cabo San Lucas at the southern tip. The Baja California Peninsula is only some 25 to 150 miles, 40 to 240 kilometers wide, with a total area of 55,400 square miles, 143,400 square kilometers. Baja California has 2,038 miles, 3,280 kilometers, of coastline, with many islands on both sides. There are sheltered deep water harbors on the western coast as well as on the Gulf. The interior of the Baja California Peninsula has mostly desert vegetation. This is a view of the desert in the nearby Catavina region of Baja California. A series of mountain ranges run the length of the Baja Peninsula that extends into Southern California. This mountain range in Baja California can be considered to be continued northward by the coast range of mountains that run up through California. Oregon, and Washington, and on through Vancouver Island, the Queen Charlotte Islands, the Alexander Archipelago, and even to the Aleutian Archipelago. The Gulf of California can similarly be considered to be a submerged valley that has continued northward by the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys of California. The Willamette Valley of Oregon. Puget Sound, and even up through the inside passage of British Columbia and Alaska. 
In 1973, a 1,061 mile, 1,708 kilometers highway connecting Tijuana and Cabo San Lucas was completed. Subsequently, Baja California's isolation was alleviated and its agriculture, mining, tourism, and the industries especially in the northern half of the peninsula, have expanded. Baja is on the move. No, this is not what I meant by on the move. This shows the various tectonic plates of the Earth. They are in a variety of sizes and shapes. The plates are moving slowly with respect to each other. Typically a few centimeters per year. All around the Pacific Ocean where the big Pacific plate meets surrounding plates, there is an area of strong earthquake and volcanic activity called the Ring of Fire. This arc around the Pacific Rim is called the Ring of Fire because of the concentration of volcanic and seismic activity. Much of Mexico is included in this seismically active region. The major trenches on the map are located where tectonic plates meet, with one being driven under another. Note the Middle America Trench off the west coast of Mexico. This is where the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate meet all along the west coast of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Note that the Baja California Peninsula is riding on the Pacific Plate, whereas the rest of Mexico is on the North American Plate. The Pacific Ocean Plate is drifting very slowly to the northeast with respect to the North American Plate at a rate of about 2 inches per year. The San Andreas Fault in California extends down through the Gulf of California between the Baja Peninsula and the mainland of Mexico. The Baja Peninsula along with the Los Angeles and San Diego area is sliding northward with respect to the rest of California, and will eventually, eons of years from now, become adjacent to San Francisco. A large part of Mexico, including the Baja Peninsula, and the area around Mexico City is in a seismically active region. Cabo San Lucas or Cape of St. Luke Cabo San Lucas is a small city at the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula in the state of Baja California Sur, Mexico. Cabo San Lucas has a population of 60,000. Here is Cabo San Lucas and the neighboring resort town of San Jose del Cabo at the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula. Cabo San Lucas Land Zend is at the southern tip of Baja, and its arch can be seen at sunset. This is Lands End in Cabo San Lucas. On one side is the Pacific Ocean. And on the other side is the Gulf of California, also known as the Sea of Cortez. This is Lands End. This is Cabo San Lucas and Lands End. This is a view of Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas is quickly becoming a high-end holiday destination, with several resorts and timeshare clubs appearing along the coast between San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo. Although humans have lived on the southern portion of the Baja California Peninsula for thousands of years, including the region of Cabo San Lucas, it was not until the beginning of the 20th century that a fishing village began to develop in that area. In 1917, 
an American company built a floating platform to catch tuna. And ten years later founded the Compañía de Productos Marinos, which gave rise to the village. The warmth of the waters of Cabo San Lucas. The beauty of its beaches. The abundance of sport fish. And other qualities. Motivated a great number of both foreign and Mexican vacationers to spend their vacations in large-scale tourist developments there. This started mainly in 1974 when the Mexican government created the infrastructure to turn Cabo San Lucas into one of the most attractive centers for tourism in Mexico. Cabo San Lucas has become an important vacation and spa destination, with a great variety of sites of interest. And timeshares that have been built on the coast between San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo. The distinctive El Arco de Cabo San Lucas is a local landmark. In the winter, between December and March, thousands of California gray whales and other species make their annual migration from colder climates to bear their calves in the warm waters here. The Golden Corridor is between Cabo San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo. Cabo San Lucas has a party atmosphere, whereas San Jose's has a more relaxed colonial style. The corridor between the two towns is 20 miles of pristine white sand beaches and craggy coves. There are exclusive hotels and gated residential communities throughout this region known as the Golden Corridor. Many of these properties, which are considered some of Latin America's top resorts, have become havens to Hollywood stars, Fortune 500 CEOs, and even the U.S. President during the 2002 Asia-Pacific Economic Conference. This view of Cabo San Lucas shows the rapid growth of the area. Ships tender in the Cabo San Lucas Bay, close to El Arco. A 10-minute tender ride drops you at the marina, which is about a 10-minute walk outside of town. Taxis, usually vans, are plentiful and a ride into town will cost $3 per person. To venture outside of the downtown area can become expensive. Although the center of town is within walking distance, the heat can be intense in Cabo and a pleasant alternative to traditional taxi, if there is just one or two of you, is to hire one of the bicycle taxis. This is the Tender Wharf at Cabo San Lucas. Both the ship's tenders and local tenders are used. This is the tender heading to the Tende Wharf at Cabo San Lucas. This is the tender loading passengers at the ship. This is a view of Cabo San Lucas from the tender. This is the marina and downtown Cabo San Lucas. This is a view of the Tender Wharf in Cabo San Lucas. This is the Cabo San Lucas Tender Wharf. The Marina Mercado is right at the foot of the Tender Wharf. There is lots of shopping here. And also in the arts and crafts market around the corner. Handcrafted pottery. Traditional Mexican artifacts, local arts and crafts, beachwear and silver jewelry are the mainstay of Cabo's offerings. Although silver can be a great bargain, be careful to inspect your purchase for quality. A minimum of 0.925 should be engraved on the back of any silver item. Tequila and cigars are also popular purchases. Boulevard Marina and the nearby streets that back up to the main square make up the main shopping district of Cabo San Lucas.
This is the main shopping district of Cabo San Lucas. This is a view of the main shopping district of Cabo San Lucas. This is the walkway along the marina at Cabo San Lucas. The Dolphin Center is directly across from the marina. Playa El Medano, or Medano Beach, is the main safe swimming beach in Cabo San Lucas, and the most popular. Playa El Medano begins at the east side of the Harbo and extends for some two miles along Cabo San Lucas Bay. Numerous water taxis are available at the marina for the short ride to the beach for about $2.50 per person. This is Playa El Medano, or Medano Beach. You can get a good view of the lands and rock formations in the distance from anywhere on the beach. This is one of Cabo's longest beaches and is said to be the best swimming beach. Playa El Medano has numerous restaurants and Mexican bars right on the beach. You can also rent equipment for a wide variety of beach and water sports. Playa El Medano translates to the Dunes Beach. The principal scenic attraction at Cabo San Lucas is the rock formations at Land's End. This shows the location of Land's End. This is a view of Land's End. Glass bottom boats depart regularly from the marina circle around El Arco at Land's End for a close peek at this landmark rock formation where seals Sea lions and pelicans bask in the sun. The glass bottom boats will drop you off at Playa del Amor, Lover's Beach. Sandwiched between El Arco, the Sea of Cortez and the Pacific Ocean. Where you can picnic. This is the shore excursion to Land's End, with a diamond princess in the background. This is Land's End where the Pacific Ocean meets the Sea of Cortez. Cabo's signature landmark is El Arco, the Arch, a rock formation at the tip of Land's End, where the Pacific Ocean meets the Sea of Cortez. Cruise lines offer many excursions around El Arco, from glass bottom boats to catamaran sails. Playa de la Moor is Lover's Beach in Cabo San Lucas. You can get a water taxi to take you to Lover's Beach. This is Lover's Beach. Lover's Beach is the only beach situated between two seas. Here the Sea of Cortez is in the foreground. And the Pacific Ocean is in the background. Lover's Beach on the Gulf side has calm waters. Good for swimming. On the other hand, Divorce Beach on the Pacific Ocean side has rough waters. This is a view of Lover's Beach. This is Lover's Beach at Cabo San Lucas. This is El Arco at Land's End. There are many noisy sea lions residing on the rock formations. This is Land's End. This is Land's End. This is another view of Land's End. This is a view of the Diamond Princess in the Gulf of California from the Pacific Ocean side. This is another view of Land's End. These are sea stacks near Cabo San Lucas. This is Neptune's finger at Land's End. This again is Neptune's finger at Land's End. This is another view of Land's End. This is another view of Land's End. 
This is another view of Land's End. This is another view of Land's End. These are luxury hotels and condominiums on the Pacific Ocean side. This shows the location of the luxury hotels and condominiums on the Pacific Ocean side. These are luxury hotels and condominiums on the Pacific Ocean side. These are luxury hotels and condominiums on the Pacific Ocean side. These are luxury hotels and condominiums on the Pacific Ocean side. Movie stars such as John Travolta, Sylvester Stallone, and others are said to live in this area above the cliffs, facing the Pacific Ocean. These are luxury homes on the Pacific Ocean side. Cabo San Lucas is known as the Marlin capital of the world. A modern marina has facilities for 250 fishing boats and 350 private slips. Cabo San Lucas is host to the largest marlin tournament in the world. With a $1 million jackpot. These are some of the best fishermen in the area. We are the best fishermen in Cabo. These are some of the best fishermen in the area. Some of the best fishermen in the area. Recommended videos, Mexican Riviera, Part 1. Recommended video, Tijuana Top 10 Tourist Attractions. 11 minutes. 11 seconds. Recommended video, Ensenada, Mexico. Best things to do in this Baja California gem, 11 minutes, 24 seconds. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico Travel Guide, 8 minutes, 44 seconds. Recommended video, Los Cabos Vacation Travel Guide Expedia, 7 minutes, 15 seconds. Mexican Riviera, Table of Contents, Part 1, Introduction, Baja California, Tijuana, Ensenada, and Cabo San Lucas. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.